thing I'll say logistically is that, you know, let's kind of use the Vegas policy a little bit in terms of respect confidentiality, kind of what we talk about here, you know, let it stay here. Um, especially in master track, this is a chance for a lot of you to go deeper. And I'm going to encourage you today to think of a, um, what some of us would call a BHAG. Are you familiar with the concept BHAG? BHAG is big, hairy, audacious goal. And so if you think about now over the next three modules, this is your chance to become a master at NLP, to start to enter that first kind of level of mastery with neurolinguistic programming. I'm assuming everyone here has a minimum set of knowledge in your bones already. Now is the time to take it to a whole nother level. And so what will make that, in my opinion, more rich and meaningful is if we have a very solid, real context that you can kind of work on throughout the master practitioner training. So if you think about a goal that you have now, something that's big, something that's compelling enough that really like would make you want to stay up late and get up early to get that, start to get that in your mind. And after we go through the review later on today, we're going to have you refresh your memory about well-formed outcomes. And I'm going to suggest that you write it down and commit it down. Because my hope for each and every one of you is by the time we reach the last day of the last weekend, you look back and you go, wow, I got that. And it's already come true. Okay? And I think that's totally possible. And what that will do is that will solidify what you've learned and what you've accomplished in here. Those, those of us uh, and those of you who have been doing NLP for a while know that one of the most common things that happens is when you do a piece of work at a very deep level, particularly at the level of belief and identity, it is incredibly important to document it beforehand, the present state, and then document the desired state afterwards. Because a lot of times when you're working at that deeper level, people literally forget they had a problem. Okay? Which isn't a problem in and of itself, but the concern I have with that is that if they forget they had a problem, so let's say you have a big, hairy, audacious goal, but you don't write it down today. And let's say that shifts and changes over the next three modules. That's wonderful that you got that change. But where I believe you're shortchanging yourself is what you could have also gotten is this dramatic reference experience in your bones of going from here to there and the empowerment that comes along with that. So f to give you an example, we do a lot of quit smoking in our clinic. We've done thousands and thousands of cases of quit smoking. And one of the things I love about that is, you know, quitting smoking is a fairly easy intervention for a hypnotist and an NLP coach who's been trained in exactly how to do that. But what happens is, is that when someone goes from like, I can't stop, right, to totally quit, it plants a seed of belief in their mind about, wow, if I can do that, what else is possible? If I can do that, what else is possible in my life? So not only do we want you to have this big breakthrough, I want you to be aware that you had it. I want you to be able to look back and see it. And so that brings up a major theme of the master track, which is what's called metacognition. Metacognition is the ability to recognize what you're doing when you're doing it, to be able to kind of put a language to it and go, oh, I did an anchor there. I did a guided search there. I did a um, slight of mouth uh, pattern, which you're going to learn in the master track. Your ability to start to recognize when you or when someone else is using a particular skill or technique. And again, why? It helps you get it deeper into your bones. Okay, does that make sense? So we want you to have a big breakthrough, but we want you to be aware that you had a big breakthrough and not forget it. I'll tell you a real quick story. M one of my first uh, kind of like NLP clients was um, a woman. She came into my office and <clears throat> she, um, as she described it, had big time mommy issues. And it was like mom, 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 mom. And she was in her mid-30s at the time, right? So this is like a 12-year-old. She had all these mom issues and like everything in her life, you know, re referred back to her mom. So when it came to her relationships with men, it referred back to her mom, which it came to her job, referred back to her mom, her ability to take care of herself financially, emotionally, even physically. It was all about her mom. Mom, mom, mom. And so we did a process that I was taught called uh, releasing emotional enmeshment, an NLP process. And I was like, hey, no problem. This, this should be great for helping you to you know, get rid of this enmeshment that you have between you and your mom. So we did this process. 
She goes home, comes back to the office two weeks later, and we're sitting down, and I'm like, hey, how you doing? She goes, oh, I'm doing great. You know, I'm doing great, you know. She's talking about her relationship. She's talking about work, what have you. And I'm listening, using my sensory acuity, and I'm not hearing, I didn't hear the word mom at all. And like, there was mom in every sentence before at least once, if not twice, right? So I'm listening, I go, well, how's your job going? You know? She's like, oh, da, 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 my boss is this. You know, we're working on this project. And I didn't hear mom. I'm like, oh, man. And I'm getting hopeful, but I'm, you know, I want to do my checking, right? So then I ask her about work and her fitness and all this stuff. No mention of mom at all. So I said, you must be really proud of yourself. She goes, eh, not so much. You know? And I'm like, well, I mean, man, you had, like, you know, what about your mom? You know? And I started asking her questions about her mom. And she got annoyed. <laughs> She eventually said, you know, I kept saying, well, what about your mom? Are, you know, do, you're not thinking about your mom when it comes to your relationship, whatever. And she finally said, Robert, listen, I'm sorry. I don't mean to be rude. I don't want to talk about my mom. You keep bringing it up. I don't know why you keep bringing her up. I'm, that's not what I'm here to work on. She literally told me that. That's not what I'm here to work on. I'm here to work on, like, improving my job and losing some weight, it's these other things. <clears throat> and it was so funny because that's absolutely what she was there to work on. So document. Okay, for those of you, how many people here are already or planning on being an NLP coach or doing some sort of coaching or some sort of business. Yeah. So um, one thing that was told to me is you always want to very clearly um, track your metrics and don't take on a case that you can't measure and make sure that you get a clear present state, a clear desired state, and then you get ideally if you can, which is really good for your business, is dramatic evidence that that occurred. Uh, what's great about that is, is that when someone comes into your clinic and has a major breakthrough, their ability to recognize that they did and to know clearly, specifically what changed is huge. And it's a very important part of starting to create that tiered level of learning that happens because there's always more to go. But if they don't recognize the value they got out of that first couple of sessions or that first process you did with them, they may not be interested in continuing on. Does that make sense? Okay, and so we'll be talking about that over the master track on how I would measure these different things like with stress, pressure, obviously weight and smoking is pretty easy to measure, certain habits are pretty easy to measure. But with almost anything like this, knowing some basic NLP, there's all kinds of ways to create a metric. And that metric is not just important for us as the practitioner <clears throat> or soon to be master practitioner, to know if we're doing our job well enough, but we, it's incredibly important in learning for them to know the progress that they're making. Because that becomes a reference experience that they can change, that they will go back to. Okay, so that is my big kind of, you know, motivational speech for why you should come up with a compelling goal here in a little bit. Okay, and then make it clear and measurable. <clears throat>